Paramahamsa Nityananda, a rare living incarnation, is named among the world's 100 most spiritually influential personalities today. Paramahamsa Nityananda has been placed alongside Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, Paulo Coelho and others by Mind Body Spirit, the world's top esoteric magazine from Watkins, London's oldest and largest bookstore. A yogi by birth, he has been expressing his power of enlightenment since birth. He has authored more than 500 books in Tamil and English. Translations of these books are available in 26 languages in Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, Gujarati, Oriya, Bengali, Marathi, French, Malay, Polish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Danish, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. He is also an exemplary speaker with over 10,000 hours of profound life solutions through his discourses. Social services such as Annadan, free medical care, free educational services with ashrams, schools, temples, hospitals established in more than 140 places around the world offering exceptional services. A powerful spiritual healer who has healed millions of people of diseases from migraine to cancer, a Kriya Yogi who has formulated Kriyas for physical health and mental well-being benefiting thousands, a living master who offers practical solutions for our everyday problems. He is the founder and spiritual head of Nityananda Dhyanapitam, a spiritual powerhouse who has revived the sacred Vedic tradition by establishing Vedic temples in places like Los Angeles, San Jose, Seattle, Toronto, Ohio, Oklahoma, Phoenix, St. Louis, Malaysia, Brazil, Paris, Guadeloupe, Dallas, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, Calgary, Vancouver, Singapore and places in India like Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Tiruvannamalai. A spiritual guru for 10 million followers, an incarnation who transmits the highest spiritual energy through initiation, a contemporary yogi who has revived the Vedic science of yoga worldwide through thousands of yoga centers, an adept in Ashtamaha Siddhis, mystical yogic powers who has effortlessly awakened the Kundalini of thousands and graced them with spiritual powers, a dynamic young guru who is an inspiration for for thousands of youngsters. India's most watched spiritual guru online, a beacon of spiritual light who has triumphed over the forces of religious terrorism and political persecution. Paramahamsa Nityananda is an eternal Kalpataru blessing the world with the boons of material abundance and spiritual enlightenment. He is the 293rd pontiff of the world's most ancient Hindu organization, Madure Adinam. Today's subject is karma and healing. We have some researches and research reports, but before seeing the scientific researches, let us understand these two words karma and healing. In Vedic tradition, there is no good karma or bad karma. Karma, that's all. You are bound by actions and inactions. Either you start liking action or 
liking inaction you feel it will make you pure or impure then you start projecting that same thing on everybody you corrupt your environment you corrupt the people who live with you please understand whatever you feel as core of your life knowingly or unknowingly you make others believe and you, all your action makes others fall in tune with that belief whatever you are not able to make it part of your life your understanding is bad karma whatever you are able to assimilate and make it as part of you is good karma please understand it's like this the projector some scenes are projected through the projector on the screen sometime the light is too big only some 70 percent is falling on the screen and the 20 percent is falling out of out 30 percent is falling outside the screen the screen is life the projector light is karma whatever is falling inside the screen is good karma whatever is falling outside the screen is bad karma so now what to do to make the whole thing as good karma just expand the size of the screen expand your understanding about life whatever can fall inside your screen the screen means your experience about life is good whatever is falling out whatever you are not able to grasp as part of your life is called bad now all you need to do to integrate karma see please understand as long as there is a good karma and bad karma healing can never happen there will be one part of karma constantly hurting you haunting you just expand your understanding about life enemies make you strong really i tell you i tell you earlier i was thinking for 1500 years i'll be a living stream means the science enlightenment science which i brought and which i am transmitting to human beings will be continuously transmitted with life alive it will be alive for 1200 years i thought now i tell you at least 5000 years <laughs> let it be on record when vivekananda declared his uh, sangha will be a live stream of enlightenment for 1200 years unfortunately we did not have video camera now fortunately we have it let it be recorded at least 5000 years power of a spiritual organization is defined based on how much you can bear understand not punching power bearing power how much you can take it understand about life you will expand the screen the whole projector scene will fall on you there is nothing called bad karma that is what i call surrender expanding your understanding about life because life is an unpredictable happening when you are ready to expand the screen means your understanding about life your experience about life whole thing falls inside the screen there is no bad karma understand bad karma is the projector light falling outside the screen projector light is a karma 
your understanding about life is a screen just expand it i tell you the weight which you lift is karma the pain which you feel is bad karma the muscle which you build is good karma if you have the understanding the pain is part of the muscle getting built there is no bad karma there is no pain then suddenly you will see whole thing is good the enemies who attack is karma the richness which you became the strength which you became is good karma the pain you go through at that time is bad karma but if you understand the richness the strength the extraordinary strength happens because of the pain which you go through at those moments of insecurity when you understand that there is no bad karma whole thing becomes life never avoid insecurity never avoid enemies that is the ultimate lesson just stand and stare nothing else don't blink there is no bad karma there is no bad karma i tell you the moment you understand see this simple example lifting weight that is karma the pain which you feel in the muscles is bad karma and the muscles which gets built gets strengthened is good karma getting strengthened the muscle getting built the beauty and strength comes because of the pain understanding about life when that happens the pain is no more a bad karma make enemy as a joker let him not be a villain if he feels he is villain he will go on be playing the role of anti hero the anti hero feeling gives a tremendous strength make him a joker understand even with the life just have this clarity there is no such thing as bad happening in the life understand there is no such thing as bad happening there is no such thing as bad publicity there is no such thing as bad karma in the world everything makes you rich everything teaches you new dimension of life are life means happening cancer cells are cancer cells if you don't want to go for the transmission of new body if you feel as great oh the cancer has happened it's okay so now i am also bored with the same set of people and set of mind and set of routine and set of lifestyle it will be really nice if i have a new body and new people new friends and new situations and new possibility and new opening and new happening and possibility to to learn new language new people new friends and new life great come on let's relax and take another one body just expand the understanding about your life cancer is no more bad karma no more bad karma see if you want to break candy chocolates if they already made one line in some candies there will be lines easily it can be broken in that lines so you can you can call that line as a bad karma same way if you understand the whole life the cancer is just like a line made yes now i have to break this candy nice already they made a line and kept 
let me break it and do the next job. Come on, let's take up the next slide. Same way, depression. When you have the depression, the possibility to create new mind is there in front of you. You can say, come on, hey. Depression means there is something seriously wrong with what I was doing, with my understandings. So it's not bad karma. The possibility of expansion is there. Let me look into it. Let me break. Let's get into next life, next mental setup. I tell you, every cancer is a possibility for new body. Every depression is possibility for new mind. Just expand the understanding. Expand the understanding. That's all, nothing else. Go on expanding the screen on which the projector light and projector scene is projected. There can be no bad karma. All incidents and happenings of your life should be inside your screen. Inside your understanding about life. That is what I call living enlightenment. One more definition. All understandings and happenings of your life, possibilities of your life, if it is inside your understanding screen. See, your understanding and experience about your life is the screen. If everything is inside that screen, you are radiating enlightenment. That's all. Expand the understanding. about life, no wounds, no hurts, there is no such thing as a hurt, wound, pain, bad, when you understand and expand your experience about life. Everything makes you rich. Everything makes you rich. Everything strengthens you. Everything strengthens you. Look inside. Never ask, why should this happen to me? See, I have seen in Indian villages, they will make jaggery, the country sugar. They will boil the sugar cane juice. I have seen when it is getting boiled, intensely, slowly, 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 it will become thicker and thicker. And all the dust part will slowly get gathered in one corner. In one car, and all that black dust part will gather. And they will take that out and they will make a different kind of a jaggery out of that dust. It's called karupatti. In Tamil, they call it. It's a different kind of jaggery that is used as a medicine. Understand? The dust jaggery is used as medicine. Because the dust is nothing but the bits and pieces which can't be crushed, sugar can pieces, the sugar cans, that, the little bigger pieces, which can't be crushed nicely, that is the dust. So that will come up separately. When that happens, if some few mud and all falls, that cannot be used. Same way, understand, if something were See, just understand that whole process, that jaggery getting made, means the sugar can juice getting boiled. The dust part, the dust jaggery, that is what you call as bad karma. I can say depression or cancer. 
that is really not unusable only if the outside mud falls into it outside mud is you asking why this happened for me don't ask why that is the mud if the mud falls on the dirt that dirt cannot be used if the mud does not fall on the dirt the dirt will become medicine i have seen the dirt they will collect the dirt and make karpati which is a medicine for ulcer especially stomach ulcer that's a medicine and throat problem throat irritation that is a medicine so don't question the happenings why for me there is something from this happening getting added to me if you feel that you will become rich through all happenings if there is no mud added to that dirt part and one more thing when they make jaggery they will not remove the dirt part till this completely become hard because till the last moment from the dirt part the juice will be getting sucked into the main jaggery part i was reading a beautiful book the world ramakrishna knows based on all the examples he gave in his discourses and classes and sessions they painted the world ramakrishna knows the background it was such an amazing book same way based on all my examples i give you can paint the world i know the world out of which i was born and brought up actually you need to know that world only then you will understand completely the implications of my teachings only if you have seen the villagers making jaggery in large vessels boiling the sugar can juice you can understand the lesson which i am teaching now in large vessels they will burn boil and boil the sugar can juice when it becomes semi solid the dust will dirt will start gathering and they will not remove the dirt out of that part till the end because till the end the juice will be getting extracted out of the dirt into the jaggery when it becomes almost solid only then then they will remove the dirt part and make a separate mold out of the dirt part so that it can be, it will become medicine so the dirt itself is not useless don't think it is useless no it is useful but when the mud gets added into the dirt it will not be useful it has to be thrown away if there is some big breeze and the mud comes and falls on the dirt it cannot be used same way when you ask the question why this happened to me the dirt has fallen on the the mud has fallen on the dirt part bad karma you made bad karma now. instead see very clearly even from the dirt something is making me rich something is happening when you wait without removing the dirt and observe all the juice and lessons you need to learn from the dirt will be taken into the main jaggery the good karma and after that also even that essence dirt will become medicine so there is no bad karma there is no bad karma any incident happens makes you rich makes you richer than what you are understand life is paradox when you are not interested in living with paradox you will not have life you will not have life life is conflict model understand life's model is not square or round or 
rectangle or triangle life model if you want to know the geometry of life understand it is called conflict model this is the geometry of life conflict model but you go on trying to make rectangles triangles circular circles squares out of life but how much ever you cut and remove finally there is a bit which you can't make either square or rectangle or quadrangle or triangle or circle and you can't swallow that bit which was left you call that as bad karma whatever you can call and cut as a square round rectangle quadrangle triangle sometime little artistic like a lotus whatever you can get it get it and cut it and take it out you call all of them good karma and the bits and pieces left out of which you can't make anything you call that as bad karma no no life is conflict model the geometry of life is conflict model understanding just constantly go on expanding the understanding muscle see just like how this bodybuilders go on using the weight and expand the muscles even with little pain same way go on adding the understanding as weight in your hand and expand the muscle of your life the screen of your life so unless you have the weight in your hand and work out and allow the pain in your muscle your muscle can't expand you can't build the body same way unless uh, this understanding is a weight take it in your hand understanding about life expand every moment your life with this understanding life's geometry is conflict model there is no clear cut left right square rectangle quadrangle circle triangle go on expanding your consciousness muscle of your consciousness with this weight lifting with this understanding as a weight you will build your consciousness you will build your life just like body building we can say this is a science of life building science of consciousness building people spend so much time on body building they need to understand and spend at least little time on consciousness building on life building if you understand karma healing happens immediately understand there is no such thing as bad karma bad karma is only one thing asking why this happened to me that's all another one funny thing if you go and hit at the wall and say why there is a wall here i should be walking through this way why is a wall here and you go on hitting 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 who is going to suffer then you will blame the person who decide to build then you will blame the person who built then you will blame the person who funded it then you will blame the person who poured water to it then you will blame the person who painted it then you will blame the person who is not demolishing it without understanding the simple science door is other way the why always brings wrong answer you are hurt for wrong reasons 
don't be hurt by the person who built the wall who funded for the wall who painted the wall who is maintaining the wall just learn where is door when you ask why you are hurt hurt and you put wrong people as reason for your hurt when you put when you find wrong reason for your hurt be very clear it can never be healed it can never be healed it can never be healed it will just stay in you as a wound forever and ever because you created it with wrong reason it's like a mud being added to the dirt once that happens the dirt can never be used as medicine and it can never be useful for any more after that separation is not possible maybe you can grind and mix it in water and filter it it's almost like taking one more bath understand this great truth life is an extraordinary insecurity it is extraordinary insecurity because it is living living means extraordinary insecurity either you can be exhausted by it or excited by it if you are exhausted by it you need entrainment if you are excited by it you are enlightened understand this five e's life is an extraordinary uncertainty either you can be exhausted by it are excited by it if you are exhausted you need entertainment don't go for entertainment entertainment means diversion no you need entertainment if you are excited by it you are enlightened i tell you the secret of the courage is this one understanding i never ask the question why no not even once why this for me no why makes you shrink now what can be done what should be done makes you expand expand the muscles of your consciousness by lifting the understanding as weight there is no such thing as bad in the life when you understand karma there is no bad karma there is no good karma expanding the screen of life on which the scenes of karma is projected and making sure that no part of the life is outside the screen means no incident no happening of your life is out of your understanding and digestion capacity out of your experience make sure person whose scenes fall outside his screen is bound guy
ಬಂದ ಜೀವ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಾಲ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ಇ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೀವನ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಎನ್ಲೈಟೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೋ ಬಿಗ್ ಈವನ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಜೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀನ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ who has place so vast even the others projector scenes can be there good or bad is ready to digest swallow stand karma now i am interpreting this word as action which has not reached perfection please understand action which has not reached perfection when the action reaches the perfection it liberates you it disappears from the cosmic ocean please understand action is like a ripple effect when it reaches the boundary it disappears any ripple effect when it reaches the boundary it disappears karma is the action which has not reached its extreme which has not seen the end which has not seen the perfection the moment karma sees the perfection action reaches its perfection action sees the end it experiences the extreme suddenly please understand suddenly it disappears for example you throw a stone on a pond the ripple effect is created the moment it reaches the end it the moment it reaches the bank the moment it reaches the perfection the ripple effect disappears now the pond swallows the stone and the ripple effect created by the stone then same way when an engram is thrown on you what is created is karma when that reaches its perfection its extreme end karma is liberated from you you are liberated from karma that is why in all our programs i emphasize so much on completion karma is a unfulfilled action unfulfilled engram please understand it's unfulfilled engram for example you have some strong anger hiding anger about your parents about your sister about your family members that's a karma now unless you complete it unless you make it perfect complete you will not be relieved from it at some situation very difficult situation that engram will come up and it will be so strong knowingly you will put yourself in a big mess understand knowingly you will put yourself in big mess 
it is not that all the time people put themselves in a big mess unknowingly. No, knowingly you put yourself in a big mess. Karmanye vadikaraste mabale shugatachanaha makarma balahe durbu mate sangostva karman uncompleted incomplete karmas when they are sitting in you they will be so wild so strong they will find some justification usually they find the justification of comparison why why should i i alone be non violent he is also violent let me be also violent only then i can protect myself understand by all your justification you may try to be a violent that is not going to protect you he will also be in a soup you will also be in a soup that's all both of you can swim in the same soup that is not going to solve your problem he will also be in a chaos chaos because he is violent you will also be in a chaos because you are violent understand minus plus minus plus minus is not plus in the cosmic law only in mathematics minus plus minus is plus no in the cosmic law it does not apply minus into minus is not plus in cosmic law minus 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 understand just because he does bad karma your bad karma is not justified then you come up with something practicality what is practicality no 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 in this plane this is only possible then suffer that plane sufferings i have seen many people no 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 what you are talking is great swami but it is a spiritual plane people are in normal plane so i have to work in the normal plane then you have to have the sufferings of the normal plane also then you have to go through all the problems and sufferings of the normal plane when the disease problems sufferings of the normal plane comes then you suddenly you say oh my whole life i listened to your teachings i lived you as you showed and i prayed to you what is this swami ji where am i oh god all the time you had one big weapon called being practical or this plane as a protection from my teachings that's the right word i'll use now there is a new paint commercials are going if you paint it on the wall no water will penetrate the wall they show it they take a small hand mesh and put that paint all around and pour water and water does not seep water does not go through the mesh and the fish can stay in that same way you have put a special paint coat on you so that my teachings cannot enter into you see with this great versus the only trouble is when you are supposed to leave it apply it you say ah for practical purposes i think i can bend this much it's okay if you are bending for practical purpose means what this plane of existence then suffer all the sufferings of this plane of existence be very clear karma is actions which have not yet become perfect in you when you complete them you are also liberated from that samskara engram the engrams are also liberated from you understand all bondages are always for both all bond liberations are always for both if it is a bondage it is for both if it's a liberation it's for both if 
karma if you are bound by the karma karma is also bound by you if you are liberated from karma karma is also liberated from you that is why i am saying every action completion of the action is really 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 directly helpful for you will directly liberate you will directly lead you to the higher existence complete every action you take it up just far completing because it is there you have to complete that's all don't bother about the rewards don't bother about the results don't bother about anything else complete just for completing today i'll translate karma as accumulated results of actions accumulated results of actions yogi does not have accumulated results of actions because the instrument with which the accumulated results are experience the mind or the body with which the accumulated results are experienced does not exist for him because he resides in a space where there is no accumulated results are touching so the logic with which the effects of accumulated karma works around the master is totally different from the logic with which it works in your life that is why when you just give a one small amlaki fruit to shankara your house is showered with golden amlaki fruits when you just try to give little poison milk to sri krishna like budana the whole life is sucked out understand the logic with which karma functions why padanjali says yogi does not have good or bad karmas in the cosmic system also the center of the cosmos the person who has become center the yogi as a freedom to play with karma to go beyond karma but one important thing is neither he is affected by it nor the cosmos gets affected by it that is something very unique please understand this point is where the atis and this differ atis claim the whole thing is automated mechanism but the yogis claim it is not automated mechanism there is some independent intelligence which plays the role of the center being the head but fortunately it is not equivalent to the political head of a country see the freedom political head as over the law of the country can create good and bad shukla and krishna can happen but the power 
the manipulating power the free will power a yogi has over the cosmic law karma neither as sukla or krishna neither creates good nor bad over the cosmic law the independent intelligence the capacity to manipulate which yogi possesses when you do not know the laws of the cosmos when you are not interested in aligning with the cosmos the universe tries to align you that is what you call as punishment it is not it is a signals sent to you by the universe to align yourself to get back to the center to get back to the source to get back to the functioning please understand the law of the cosmos is what we call karma all rivers flow into the ocean and disappears into the ocean ocean never overflows or reduces it neither dries nor overflows ఆభూయమానం అచల ప్రతిష్టం సముద్ర బాబ ప్రవిశంతి యత్వత్ దర్ ఇస్ నో సచ్ థింగ్ యాజ్ బ్యాడ్ కర్మ ఇఫ్ యు అండర్స్టాండ్ కర్మ ద మూమెంట్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ కర్మ హీలింగ్ సింప్లీ హ్యాపెన్స్ సింప్లీ స్పాంటేనియస్లీ అండ్ న్యాచురలీ హీలింగ్ హ్యాపెన్ karma means exhausting your courage by every decision every decision make you feel the shoulder pain and exhaust oh god i can't take any more decision i am going to collapse then again next moment the next decision you take should make you collapse i tell you every time when you stand the decision which makes you feel like you will collapse your shoulder becomes more strong it's like workout only first you use 10 kg dumbbells you feel you will collapse you can't handle the pain but one day you handle the pain and work out your stamina increases next day you can lift 20 kg same way today you take one risk jump your mind says no i am exhausted i am collapsing handle next day you will take a stronger risk stronger risk decisions just like work out for body this is work out for mind karma means ability to take decisions which exhaust your confidence if you are not exhausting your confidence every day be very clear your life is going to be like a body which is never moved or made to work body which is never moved or made to work what is going to happen it will just rust and dust over body which is never made to work mind which has never taken the risk is one and the same body which has never made to work the mind which has never taken the risk is one and the same i tell you even if you are inside an organization let your heart be above the organization not below above the organization above the organizations means you don't hate the organization you run the organization but you are always free and beyond the organization you are always free unbound 
by the organization action being free from action and in action you need to discern all these three action being free from action and in action because you are understanding about all these three are too small bhagwan is saying scope of action is inexplicable now i am explaining understand the real scope of action means exhausting your confidence courage to take the decisions which exhaust your confidence every day the decisions you made the work you did the work you did should tire your body the decisions you made should wither your mind then you have the yogic body and vedic mind understand i am defining yogic body and vedic mind the work you did whole day by night your body should be tired and fall asleep the risks the medit the decisions you took with your mind your mind should just wither away and fall into the abyss of peace fall into sleep only then you have yogic body and vedic mind any man who lives just as disorganized lives like animal and dies who lives organized lives like a mediocre human being and dies who lives in organization beyond organized by exhausting his body through intense work by exhausting his mind by taking intense risks and courageous decisions he lives as god and never dies karma means exhausting your body by work and exhausting your mind and confidence by taking risks risky decisions next 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 play your game always on the edge never on the safe ground always walk on the rope not on the road walk on the tight rope always your whole life will be alive when i say walk on the tight rope even if you fall there will be net to hold you there will be a net below to hold you but don't look down and verify whether there is a net or not and then start walking the moment you did that the net will not be, not only will not be there will not be seen by you it may be there but it will not fall in your eyes when i say walk on the tight rope even if you fall there is a net to hold you and you don't look down and you just walk you are a real disciple the moment you look down and try to see the net i'll ensure you don't your eyes does not see the net and you walk continuously with doubt or you curse me and get out of the rope he said there is a net below protecting me but when i look down it is not there he is a liar you get out but when you look down i will make sure net does not fall in your eyes because if you know logically there is a net below then it is not risk then walking on the rope is not going to put you in your ultimate in your peak but if you trust there is a net because he said and walk that is going to put you in your ultimate i tell you always walk on the tight rope na never on the road that is karma basically you have three layers of karma agamya prarapta sanjita sanjita is the karma which you which is, which is like a bank reserve bank whatever you did in your life you see not only in this body 
you have taken millions of bodies. In millions of bodies, whatever you learnt, you did, all those engrams put together is called Sanjita. They use the word even sam, Samuchita. That is also one more Sanskrit word they use, Sanjita. All of you are able to see? A little big I should write. Okay? Then, next, Prarapta. Prarapta means, from this bank, you collect little bit and create your body and decide to enjoy all those karmas in this body. Hey, this is prarapta. Understand? This is bank. Like a all your past collection. That's huge account. You don't know when that will disappear or anything. Hmm? And bank means don't think some collection saving. It's a debt actually, credit. <laughs> ah, credit only. You have to finish them out. This is the prarapta. Prarapta is the little bit which you brought to enjoy or exhaust through this body. And the third karma, this is the worst thing. Agamya, after coming down, you start collecting. That is the worst thing. Agamya. This is the past. This is present, which you are exhausting. This is you are, this you are collecting for your future adding to the Sanjita. Now, any fellow who lands on the planet Earth to exhaust, for example, here you have thousand karma. I am just giving an example. When you take up your body, take your body, when you assume your body, you take only something like a ten karma. Let me finish this ten. And you come down. After coming down, you start collecting two hundred karma. By the time you go back, what will happen? Your bank balances increased by 1,210. Neither you exhausted this 10 and you collected 200 more. What will happen next time when you, by the time, next time you take the body? 1,210. Then again you take 10 and come down and collect some more. This becomes a vicious circle. This is what we call Janana Marana Chakra continuously taking more and more and more bodies and dying, body, dying, body, dying. Now, this prarapta, ten karmas, while you are living, exhausting these ten karmas, if somebody gives you the knowledge, you are not the body, you are not the mind, this karmas influencing you, the influence of this karmas over you will start coming down. Understand? For example, in this ten karma which you brought when you took the body, say, this ten prarapta, for example, in this ten prarapta karma, if you have three karma which will put you in depression, means three samskara, three engram, which will put you in depression. Three engram. Depression engram. We can say mm, D. Depression engram. Whenever the three engrams put you in depression, if you learnt how to come out, this three will start losing its power over you. It means what? In the ten, three has become less. Three has become less. Whenever you reduce the influence of prarapta on you, you are accumulating new karma. Agamya will come down. How you know? These three karmas have got, these three some engrams have got power over you to put you in depression. If they have the power to put you in depression, 
if you continue, if you obey those engrams and fall in depression, this three will not be just three, they will become ten. That seven only is called agamya. You understand? So whenever you cooperate with prarapta, you collect agamya. Whenever the prarapta loses its influence over you, you stop collecting agamya. So when this influence, this 10 engram influence over you stops means the agamya collection will stop. Bringing you back to the joy or the pure inner space, the unwavering, undisturbed inner space not only reduces prarapta's influence over you, stops the number of engrams getting collected as agamya. Is there any doubt? If you have any doubt, put it as a question. I will answer. Today we will just grind this idea, this one idea. This one idea will churn in your head or drill in your head. This one idea. Initiation means the ideas, knowledge, which brings you out of these depressive thoughts. Which brings you out of the depressive thoughts means the knowledge which brings you out of the influence of these ten thoughts. Prarapta is what we call initiation. Welcome to Inner Awakening, the most powerful personal transformation retreat you could ever experience. In just 21 days, thousands are already experiencing the shortest route to constantly high energy levels, visible anti-aging, healing of chronic diseases, fulfilling relationships and higher states of consciousness. What is the secret behind this transformation? Kundalini means the inner potential energy. Once it is awakened, opens the different doors for the conscious experience in you. I can say which is a master key for all extraordinary spiritual experiences. This extraordinary program is conducted personally by Paramahamsa Nityananda in the vibrant atmosphere of Nityananda Dhyanapitam Ashram. Open yourself to the benefits of Nitya Yoga and practical meditation. Experience physical and mental healing. Discover simple ways to handle life with success. Above all, enjoy individual darshan and blessings from Paramahamsa Nityananda every day. Take 21 days for yourself and carry home the transformation of a lifetime.